another method of heat transfer, the thermal other thermal heat transfer. We, uh, the second method is uh, convection. The first method was conduction, which we've looked at in our previous video. And in this video, part four, part four of our uh, thermal physics, we'll be looking at the uh, convection, which is a method of heat transfer in liquids and gases. Now, before we talk about that, let's look at convection as it were. Convection is the main way uh, that heat travels through liquid and gases. Convection is the, is the regular way, is the, is the normal way by which heat trans is being transferred in liquid and in gases. Now, convection only occurs in fluids. Only fluids. Fluids are things that can flow. Okay? Things that can flow. Convection only occurs in, in, in a fluid. Fluid could be liquid and fluid could be solid. Uh, sorry, fluid could be liquid and fluid could be gas. Okay, that's why convection only occurs only in uh, liquid and gases because it occurs only in fluids. Now, convection occurs in fluids and convection cannot happen in solids. We cannot have convection in solid. Solid, we only have conduction. We only have a uh, conduction because the particles are tightly put together. The particles can only gain heat. The top particle can only gain heat from the bottom particle by vibration by two ways, by either vibration of the molecules or of the particles, and also by the movement of the denocalized electrons. So that's in conduction. So the heat at the bottom of the pot, if you boil you anything, or if you heat you anything, the heat at the bottom, or from the source of the heat, it passes on from one part particle of the substance to the next by conduction, because by vibration method, by vibration method, that's in conduction. But in convection, it's a whole new story. It's a whole new story. Convection is the method of heat transfer in a fluid. In fluid. Now we're going to look at this. First of all, we talked about density. We talked about density. And we will talk about density with relation with convection. Okay? Convection currents always need to refer to changes in temperature, causing changes in density. Because when you heat a substance, it becomes lighter. So when we are describing con convection, would be like looking at the density of the substance. Denser substances or denser, denser objects, they always remain at the bottom. They always remain at the bottom. The lighter one moves up. The lighter one rises. The lighter object, they rise. So when you hit anything, the, the lighter one, the less dense one, they rise up. The denser one, they fall down. They fall to the bottom. So this principle is what conversion is using. Conversion is based on density. Convection is based on density of the particles that makes up the material. So when you heat a material, the lighter one, the ones that get heated up, they become less dense. They become less dense. They, they have to rise up. They have to rise. The denser one at the, at the top will fall to the bottom. So the procedure continues, and uh, the one that falls to the bottom gets the heat again, and then they fall down. They get the heat again, and then they come down. They get the heat, they come down. Uh, sorry, they get the heat, they rise up. They get the heat, they rise up. And then the one on top falls to the bottom again. So the process continues producing, producing what we call the conversion current. So by this process, conversion currents are produced or are made. The temperature may fall or rise, and both can create a conversion current. When temperature falls or rise, creates a conversion current. Cooler or denser gas flow, uh, goes down, is being displaced, goes down, and replaces the lighter one that gets a lot of heat. The gas that gets a lot of heat at the bottom of a container, they rise up. Hot gas, they expand and then they rise. The cooler, cooler and denser one, they go down. They become more dense and they go down, they fall to the bottom of the part of the container. The, 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 uh, the hotter one, they become hot and then they, they expand and then they rise. Hot air, when you heat the air, the hot air, they, they expand and then they rise up. They have to expand and rise. They escape from the bottom. They expand and escape. You can use the word escape. They expand and then they escape. They rise up. Then the denser one, the one up, up that are cold, they're denser. So they fall to the bottom to replace the bottom air. To replace the bottom air. The bottom air gives more heat again and then they rise with the average kinetic energy. They rise up again. They expand, they rise. And then the up one again become cooler and then they fall down to the bottom. So the process continues creating what we call the conversion current. When liquids or gas is heated, 
for let's say for example by a radiator or anything that can supply the heat a radiator near, radiator near the floor to the floor then the molecule pushed against each other making the liquid or the gas to expand because they begin to push very quickly because they gain heat they become unstable they're very hot so they push against each other so by so doing they expand they expand and then they rise this makes the hot liquid or gas less dense they become less dense than the surrounding liquid the one at the bottom that gets the heat they become less dense than the surrounding liquid and so they rise they expand and then they rise they expand and then they rise the hot liquid or gas they ri rises and then the cooler surrounding air or liquid or gas moves to take their place the hot one at the bottom the hot liquid you know like we say fluid could be a liquid or a gas so i, I will be using interchangeably liquid and gas so the hot liquid or gas they gain uh, more kinetic energy and then they expand and then they rise the 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 uh, the cooler one on top they fall down to replace them they take their place they replace the hot ones that have risen up the the, the cool ones at the top they come to the bottom so it's a process so the one that have come to the bottom that are cooler one that have come to the bottom they have a denser they are denser they have a higher density the one at the bottom that rises up they become lighter so they have lower density so conversion is about density it's a displacement uh, uh, process the, the the hotter one they become lighter they have lesser density they rises up then the cooler one at the top they have higher density they fall down they're heavier they're heavier they're heavier air or gas or liquid and then they fall to the bottom to replace the hotter one that have risen up and then since they fall to the bottom they also begin to get the heat because the heat continues they also begin to get the heat supply and then as time proceeds then they become also lighter because they expand and they become hot they expand as the particles stay away further from each other that's the meaning of the expansion because of the heat because of the heat energy you've supplied the particle begin to like uh, further away from each other so as a result we say they expand we say they are expanding when they expand then they rise when they expand they rise they, they go up again remember the one that have risen previously they be, they you know now they are cooler now they are cooler the one that have risen, risen previously those one will now fall that again and replace it because they are they are they are heavier now they are denser so they fall that again to replace the 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 lighter one that have risen up so the process is a, is a, is a continual process creating what we call the conventional current creating what we call the conventional current is that okay now we say when the liquid or gas is heated, for example, like it radiated near the floor, the molecule push against each other, each other, making the liquid or gas to expand. Now this makes the hot liquid or gas less dense. They become less dense, like we've stated already. They become less dense than the surrounding air or liquid. Now the hotter liquid or gas rises, and the cooler one, or cooler liquid or cooler gas, moves to take its place at the bottom eventually the hot liquid goes cool right the hot liquid or gas cools on top you know it rises up and it eventually goes to cool down they contract and then they sink back down they, that means they contract again you know they, they they rise before they expand before and then they rise from the bottom where they get the heat they expand and then they rise after a while because they are on top now they will cool when they cool they contract and then they sink that means they fall down again because they are heavier now they're heavier now when they cool they become heavier they, they they have to sink they have to fall to the bottom again it's a continuous process they fall to the bottom again now the resulting motion is called the conversion current so what we have this continuous motion of hot air expanding and, uh, uh, and rising up cool one, cool air uh, contracting and falling down the process continuously happening is called conventional current. That process is called conventional current. Now let's move on quickly. When a liquid or gas is cooled, for example, by, by an AC, you use an air condition, air, co air condition unit to cool the hot air in your house. If you use an air condition to cool the hot air, because the hot air will rise. And then the, at the hot air from uh, near the floor, near the floor will rise. 
the hot air near the floor from your ceramic, from your ties. You know, tie, tie is a bit of a conduction, right? We did that in conduction. So it creates hot air during the hot day. The hot air will rise up, the cooler air will fall down. The cooler air from the top will fall down, the hot air will rise up. But we use air condition to cool the hot air that have risen up. We use the air condition to cool the hot air that have risen up. The molecules move together, making the liquid or gas contract. So when they, when they rise up, the, the air condition cools them, then they will start to contract again. They will fall down to the bottom again. This makes the hot air gas more dense. The hot air is now more dense than the surrounding air. Now the cool, the cold liquid or gas will fall. The cold liquid or gas at the top will fall to the bottom so that the warmer liquid or gas can move to replace it on top. Okay? So this process is what we call conversion current. This process is what we call conversion current. Now let's de demonstrate conversion currents. A simple, a simple demonstration of conversion current in liquid takes uh, involves you using a beaker. Use a beaker, take a beaker of water and place a few crystals of potassium permanganate into it. To one end, as shown in this diagram. Okay? We take a beaker, we fill it with water, and then we add some potassium permanganate. We add it to one end. Okay? We add some potassium permanganate. Now, when the water, then we start to supply heat. We supply heat. When the water is heated, at that side, the point where you put potassium permanganate, you supply heat to that point. The potassium permanganate will dissolve in the hot water. Because as you are heating the water, the water becomes hot. So the potassium permanganate was uh, like a, a lump, like a lump. Okay, it will start, to be, it will start dissolving in the water. The hot water will start to melt it, we start to dissolve it. We start to dissolve the potassium permanganate. Right? As it's dissolving, it's becoming lighter. Remember when you put it, it was just at the bottom. When you supply heat, when you supply heat, then it's melting it. The hot water is melting it. Then it will start to rise. If you start the potassium permanganate, the color will start to go up from the bottom. Right? We dissolve the heated water and rise along the warm water, revealing the conversion current. So it will rise along the warm water. After a while, it will be, the one on top will, will become cooler, and you see it start coming down again. It start coming down again to the bottom. And then new hot ones are always rising. The cooler ones on top of the water will fall to the bottom again. So this is demonstrating the effect of a conversion current. So remember in the exam, in paper 6, if you are asked to demonstrate or write an experiment uh, demonstrating conversion current, you just take a hot water and put potassium permanganate in it and heat it. So as you heat it, it starts to melt. The hot water starts to melt the potassium permanganate, and then it starts to rise with its color, the purple color. And then when it gets up, you start seeing the color falling down again. The ones that have cooled on top will start to fall down. We start to contract and sink. To the bottom again. So this is what, it ha what is happening. This is what is happening and this is a process of demonstrating conversion current. Okay, so that's for conversion. Now let's go to the next one. Now the third method of heat transfer is called radiation. The third method of heat transfer is called the radiation. Now let's take a look at thermal radiation. Let's take a look at let's take a look at thermal radiation. Okay? Now, uh, like I said, radiation is the process whereby heat energy uh, from the sun gets to us, uh, gets to us on Earth. The heat energy from the sun gets to us on Earth. The process by which your campfire, you surround your campfire or your bushfire, you surround it and you get the heat. It comes to you during the winter or during the cold period in the Hamatan period in Africa. What do you ha what happens? What normally happens? We set fire at night. We go around it to warm ourselves because it's super cold, right? And during the winter, if you go to countries with, with, with that experience winter, they always have a fire vase in the house, right? Where they warm themselves, they cool themselves, they warm themselves. The process of the heat, the heat energy from the fire gets to you through a process of radiation. Radiation is the only method of heat transfer that does not require the medium. 
A medium is a material that carries the, the heat energy. You know, conversion requires a medium, conduction requires a medium, right? But radiation is the only method of heat transfer that do not require, require a medium for heat transfer. All thermal, uh, all object, all object gives, gives off thermal radiation. All object, they give off thermal radiation when heated, okay? Now, the hotter object, or the hotter an object is, the more thermal energy, heat energy it can emit. The hotter an object is, the more heat energy it can emit. All objects, when they're super hot, they give out heat energy. All, all. When they're super hot, they give out heat energy. The hotter the object is, the more heat energy it's going to give out. Thermal radiation is part of the electromagnetic spectrum called the infrared. Okay, the infrared you hear every time is actually the process of thermal radiation. Okay, the heat from any source can get to you through infrared, through infrared. Thermal radiation is the only way in which heat can travel through a vacuum, a vacuum, like empty space, like empty space, okay, through a vacuum, empty space. It's the only method of heat transfer through which heat energy can move through a vacuum, through an empty space, through an empty space, thermal radiation is the only method. Uh, uh, conduction requires a medium, like the particles. It needs particles to carry out, to carry the heat energy from one particle to another. That's convection for you. Convection requires a solid, a solid material to help to carry the heat energy from one particle to another. So, and also convection requires a liquid or a fluid, any fluid, to carry out, the, to help to pass the heat energy from one part to another. But radiation is the only method that does not require that does not require a medium. It can go through a vacuum. The heat energy can propagate through a vacuum. Now, it is the way in which heat reaches us from the sun, like we said already, is, it is the only way through which the heat energy from the sun gets to, to us is through radiation. Okay, please take note. It's normal, this question comes in every multiple choice exam. The only way through which heat energy gets to us through, uh, uh, is through radiation, and it can go through vacuum, empty space, can go through space. The color of an object affects how good it is in emitting or absorbing thermal radiation. Remember this, Rem remember this. The color of object determine how good it is in either emitting or absorbing heat energy. For example, black is one of the best absorber of heat energy and one of the best emitter of heat energy. So if you want heat to go far, you use black material. If you want to absorb a lot of heat energy, you use black material. That's why if you go to hot, hot countries, hot desert, like in the Middle East, they build their houses using white color. Because the black colors, they absorb a lot of heat energy. Black cars absorb a lot of heat energy. They absorb a lot of heat energy. Black houses absorb a lot of heat energy. So you see, we paint our houses. If you live in a white, in a very hot country, it's very, it's very uh, mathematically correct to build your house and use white color to paint your house. Why? Because white is not a good absorber of heat energy, neither is, good, is, is it a good emitter of heat energy. Is that okay? So the color determines silver and white, they are poor absorber and poor emitters of heat energy. So it depends where you, it depends where you live. It depends on where you live. So it determines the color because color it's a big factor in playing out uh, rad thermal radiation. Okay, now let's take a look at thermal equilibrium. Let's take a look at thermal equilibrium. As an object absorbs thermal radiation, it will become hotter. The more heat energy you get from the sun, the hotter you become. The more heat energy you get from your bush campfire, the hotter you become, the warmer you become. Now, as it gets hotter or warmer, it will also emit more thermal radiation. If you get warm or hot, you get to a level, then even the object itself will also emit thermal radiation because it's now super hot. It's now super hot. So the object itself will have, has to emit some thermal radiation. So the temperature of a body increases when the body absorbs radiation faster than it can emit radiation. Your body temperature rises your body temperature rises when, when your body can absorb more heat energy than you can emit heat energy. Otherwise, your body temperature will remain constant. 
Otherwise, the body temperature is supposed to remain constant. Supposed to remain constant. Once you see your body temperature become, is rising, it means you are absorbing more heat energy than you can emit heat energy from yourself. Okay? Now, that's that for that. Now, let's take a look at it. As it gets hotter, it will also emit thermal radiation. As object gets hotter, they also emit uh, thermal radiation. Eventually, eventually, an object will reach a point of constant temperature where it's absorbing radiation at the same rate as, where, as what is remi uh, emitting radiation. So as you keep absorbing radiation as an object, as an object keep absorbing radiation, it will get to a point where it will be at a constant temperature, meaning well, what we mean by constant temperature at this point is that the, the, the rate of absorption of the thermal radiation is equal to the rate of emission of the thermal radiation. So we say it's at equilibrium, at thermal equilibrium. That object is said to be at thermal equilibrium. When the rate of absorption of thermal energy is equal to the rate of emission of the same thermal energy, then we say the body or the object is at thermal equilibrium. We say the object is at thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is when the object is at a constant temperature, when the rate of emission or the rate of absorption is equal to the rate of emission of energy, of thermal energy. Is that okay? So let's take a look at this diagram. You take a look at this diagram. Every object gets super heat from uh, the environment, from the sun. Okay? You can see the arrow pointing, the red one is showing the heat energy that is called a folly to this object. We put a thermometer. This is a thermometer to measure the temperature, whether the temperature is rising or falling or is at constant temperature. That's the job of the thermometer, to tell us the temperature of the object, of the material. Now you see from all nooks and crannies, you can see the heat energy is coming to the object. Okay, the red one is an arrow showing the heat energy is coming to the object. Okay, this different heat energy from different directions coming to the object. So, the, the thermal equilibrium is reached when the rate, you see the yellow color is showing the heat energy that is emitted. The, the red one is absorption, the amount of heat energy. They are infrared, that's why we're showing a wave, like a wave. You see a wave, like a sine wave and a solar wave. Because they are infrared, they are electromagnetic radiation. Okay, but hot heat, heat energy is also a form of electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so you see the rate of heat, the heat rate of absorption is equal to the rate of emission. You can see the yellow color is showing the heat energy that is emitted by the body. The yellow, all the yellow colors from all directions is showing the heat energy that is emitted by the body. So you can see both the heat emitted and the heat absorbed, they are equal, they are the same. They are the same. Look at it from the diagram. You can see the, the rate of heat emitted by the body and heat absorbed by the body is same. The rate of heat energy that is emitted by the body and the heat energy that is absorbed by the body is same. When that happens, we say the body is at thermal equilibrium. Is at a thermal equilibrium. Now, what we see here is that if the rate at which the, an object receives energy is less than the rate at which the object transfers energy away from the object, then we say the object becomes a cool. The object will cool. The, when the rate, if the rate at which the object receives, that what you receive is less. is less than what you is less than the heat energy you receive is less than the rate at which uh, the object transfers heat energy away from, from itself, then we say the object will cool. Yes, because you, the rate of what you receive is less than what you are giving us, so you begin to cool down, you begin to cool. But if the rate at which the object transfers energy away, the rate of, at which you transfer energy away is less than the rate at which you receive heat energy, it meaning you are receiving more heat energy than you are giving away. Then we say the object will be get heated up. The object will become super hot. The object will get heated up. The process will always move towards thermal equilibrium. The process will always move towards thermal equilibrium. Meaning, as time progresses, the rate at which heat is given away and the rate at which heat is absorbed will become same. Will become same as time progresses. The both rate will become the uh, same. Now let's take a look at the effect of different substances. Let's take a look at the effect of different substances and, uh, and uh, whether they are good emitter, good absorbers of heat energy. Different substances in regards to color, in regards to color, different surfaces with their colors. Let's see how it affects the rate of emission and rate of absorption of 
thermal energy. Let's take a look at substances, surfaces of substances with respect to co their colors, how it affects the rate of absorption of heat energy and the rate of emission of heat energy. For example, we say the amount of thermal radiation emitted by an object depends on the number of factors. The amount of thermal radiation emitted by an object depends on number of factors. Number one is the surface color. Number one factor is the surface color. We said earlier on that color plays a vital role in the how much heat energy can be absorbed and how much heat energy can be emitted by an object. So we say the surface color is a big factor, number one factor, meaning black more radiation. Black means more radiation. Black color means more radiation. Or black surfaces means more radiation. Now, another factor is the texture of the surface. The texture of surface. Okay? Shiny surfaces means more radiation. Shiny surfaces, the texture, whether it's, it's, it's shiny, it's rough and dull, whether it's dull or it's shiny. So shiny surfaces also mean more radiation. The third factor is the surface area. Please take note. In the exam, they're going to ask you to um, uh, uh, list uh, the three factors that affect the, uh, the rate of radiation of heat energy. Number one is the surface color. Number two is the texture, whether it's uh, shiny or it's dull. Number three is the surface area of the object. The greater the surface area equal to the more area for radiation, thermal radiation. In, in other words, it means the greater the surface area, the more heat energy can be absorbed or emitted. So it means more radiation. So these are three fa uh, factors that contribute to the, the thermal radiation, thermal energy radiation. Number one is surface color. Number two is texture, whether shiny or dull. Number three is the surface area. The greater the surface area, the wider, the wider, the bigger the surface area, the more heat energy can be absorbed or more heat energy can be emitted by the surface or by the object. Now let's take a look at them characteristically. One, we look at color, absorbing, emitting. Okay, first of all, using the color. Now for black, black is a good absorber of heat energy and also a good emitter of heat energy. Black is a good absorber of heat energy and is also a good emitter of heat energy. Good absorber and good emitter. Now, dull, dull or dark color, reasonable absorber and reasonable emitter. So for dull color, they are reasonable absorber and they are also reasonable emitter. Now let's go to white colors. White colors are poor absorber and they are poor emitters of uh, uh, heat energy. Now let's go to shiny. Shiny very poor. Shiny is very poor absorber that it reflects it and very poor emitter. Shiny color, they, we say it reflects the, the, the heat energy. It doesn't absorb, neither does it emit. It, it reflects it, okay? Now let's take a look at black in, the, in summary. Let's take a look at black. Black objects are very good at absorbing thermal energy. Okay, super good in absorbing thermal energy. For example, black clothes makes you feel hotter in, in sunny weather. So that's why wearing black during hot weather is not too advisable. Using black clothes, wearing black clothes during sunny weather is not too advisable. But it's good during winter. Black clothes are very, very good at emitting thermal radiation, which is the good reason, which is the reason that the chargers for laptops and radiators in cars are color black. The chargers in laptop, the chargers in laptop, they are usually color black. You see, your, check your laptop chargers. They are black colors. They usually color black. And if you check your radi radiators in cars, they are usually color black. Okay? Radiators in our cars are usually color black. Our chargers for our laptops are usually color black. Why? It helps them to cool down. They can cool quickly because they can emit the heat energy as fast as possible. Now, shiny objects reflect thermal radiations and also absorb very little uh, thermal radiation. They also emit very little, though, and so they take longer to cool down. Shiny objects, they take longer to cool down. Look at the a metal black. Metal black is the best emitter, okay, this way. 
Shiny silver, the best reflector. Shiny silver is the best reflector. Now let's take a look at matte black. Here's a matte black, uh, heat proof. Here's heat proof, heat proof matte. Here is matte white. Now here is an infrared detector to see how much infrared or heat energy comes to this uh, substance. This is a shiny black, this one. The one we sometimes call gray, gray color. They are shades of black. Okay, this is a shiny black. Okay, here, filled with hot water. We fill here with hot water. Let's look cube. This is a cube, shiny black. So, what you see is a metal black and matte black substances used to detect heat energy, whether amount of heat that is absorbed or emitted. Heating and cooling by uh, energy, energy transfer. Is that okay? Now here comes a question. The image below shows an object flame. Sorry, the image below shows an open flame above a thermometer. Above a thermometer. From the three options given, select the options that best describe how the heat energy from the open flames reaches the bulb of the thermometer. Explain your answer. So how the heat energy from the open flame reaches the thermometer? Of course it's by radiation. It's by radiation, right? Heat energy reaches any distant object by process of radiation, right? Heat energy reaches any distant object by a process of radiation. Here's a question for us to look at. So let's start off by reading through the text in the question to get a better understanding of what is expected of us. The image below shows an open flame above a thermometer. From the three options given, select the option that best describes how the heat energy from the open flame reaches the bulb of the thermometer. Explain your answer. So here we have a Bunsen burner which is burning with a blue flame and below it, directly below this open flame, is our thermometer. Okay, so that's the, that's that question. Is that okay? Now let's quickly take a look at the last part of uh, our today's section, which is the, the greenhouse. The greenhouse. The, the greenhouse effect, the greenhouse. Okay, we say, if the earth had no atmosphere, let's say if the earth had no atmosphere, you know, atmosphere is the air above us, the surrounding above us, right? The air and the surrounding above us. So if the earth had no atmosphere, the temperature on the surface would drop to about maybe 180 degrees Celsius. No, none of us could have been able to live here, right? about 180 degrees Celsius at night and the same as the moon's surface at night. So that would be the temperature on Earth. Right? Now this would, uh, this would happen because the surface would be emitting all the radiation from the sun into the space, right? Now so the temperature of the Earth is affected by factors controlling the balance between the incoming radiation and the radiation that is emitted. Okay? So it is, uh, it is uh, controlled by our, the temperature we have on Earth is affected by the incoming radiation, the factors such as the incoming radiation and the emitted radiation. So the Earth received the majority of its heat in the form of thermal radiation from the sun. So at at the same time, the Earth emits its own thermal radiation with slightly longer wavelength than the thermal radiation it receives from the sun, right? So we say that the surface temperature of the Earth is significantly smaller than the surface temperature of the sun, super smaller, very smaller. We cannot even compare. So some gases in the atmosphere, such as water vapor, uh, methane gas, carbon dioxide, they are called the greenhouse gases, like the water vapor, the methane gas, CH4 gas, the carbon dioxide, CO2 gases, and then the greenhouse, they are all called the greenhouse gases. 
Now these greenhouse gases, they absorb and reflect black longer. Okay, they, ref they absorb, uh, 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 absorb and reflect uh, black longer. So they have a wavelength, infrared radiation from the earth and they prevent it from escaping into the space. Because they have a longer wavelength from the earth, this prevents this from escaping to the space. The earth prevents it from escaping to the space. The earth is soft. Okay, now these uh, gases absorb the radiations and then emit it back to the surface. They absorb the radiation that is supposed to be emitted by the earth. You know, the earth get heat radiation from the sun, right? It gets heated up. So the earth is a good absorber and it's also a good uh, emitter. The earth, earth itself emits this heat energy, the thermal radiation, back to the sun. But because of these gases, these greenhouse gases, why, why uh, climate change, why we have climate change, is because this, these greenhouse gases like the water vapor, the methane gases, the carbon dioxide gases, they will, uh, they will trap the heat energy that is being emitted by the earth, they will trap them and send them down again to the earth. You know, like making the earth warmer now. That's why we have the warmer earth now. So these greenhouse gases, that they're primarily the, the, the energy, the heat energy that is emitted by the earth is supposed to go back to the sun or go back to wherever it's going to. However, these greenhouse gases will trap this heat thermal radiation that has been emitted by the earth itself because the earth is hot. So it also emits heat energy. This heat energy that is, that's been emitted by the earth is trapped by these greenhouse gases and sent down again to the earth like you go nowhere you go nowhere go back go back so the the greenhouse gases send the thermal radiation that we have emitted the earth, earth has emitted it sends it back to the earth making the earth super warmer super warm and making the earth like like creating a climate change melting our ice in the polar region and creating a lot of problems for us and these greenhouse gases are being emitted or be created by man. They put in the atmosphere by man by our own activity, like during the oil, oil exploration, drilling. We use a lot of uh, greenhouse uh, gases, SO2, CO2. We emitted in, emit, emit them in our. Uh, we release them through our chimneys to the atmosphere, and these gases remain in the atmosphere waiting for heat energy that we're going to like the earth is going to like emit away from itself to make the earth cooler so they trap this heat energy and they send it back to the earth like you go nowhere you stay there so some gases in the atmosphere such as water vapor okay, we've mentioned this they absorb this heat energy and send it back to the earth these gases absorb the radiation and they emit it back to the surface emit it back to the surface of the earth this process makes the earth warmer than it would, it would have been if these gases were not in the atmosphere. Remember, these gases are caused by man. These gases are caused by the activities of men, okay, in our quest to have energy, to, power, to have electricity, to power industries. We use coal, and coal emits a lot of carbon and a lot of carbon monoxide and a lot of carbon dioxide and a lot of during oil exploration and drilling we emit all these oil oil and gas companies they emit a lot of methane gases into the atmosphere we emit a lot of uh, water vapor into the atmosphere and so these gases are waiting for us so whenever the earth gets heated and then they, they trap the heat energy that the earth emits and then they return it back to the earth so this is what is happening the thermal radiation from the sun look at it from this diagram you see the thermal radiation from the earth goes to the earth. When you reach the earth, earth is a good emitter. Okay, that's how our last brother, uh, Almighty God, has created, uh, created, the, created the earth. The earth is supposed to emit the heat energy it gets from the sun back to the sun or back to the atmosphere. But what happens is that the, when we emit them, uh, greenhouse gases are in this region. The gr greenhouse gases, the thermal radiation reflected by the greenhouse gas 
See the greenhouse gases are all concentrated somewhere around here. So they trap the heat energy that is supposed to go away. Only little can go away. Most of it is returned back to the earth. Most of it is returned back to the earth, making the earth super warm and making it a bit. Uh, some part of the earth now becoming too hot to live in, and also affecting our polar region, the northern hemisphere, melting the ice and making it warmer now. So. This is the, if we want to deal with the problem of climate change, we must reduce the release of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So it's pretty simple. If man has to reduce the problem of climate change, man has to uh, do something about cleaning the atmosphere from greenhouse gases and stop emitting more of these greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. When we do this, then the earth will be in a better form. We will be in a better place to live in. Now we, let's take a look at the temperature of the earth. We say the temperature of the earth therefore depends on several factors and such as the rate that the light and the infrared radiations from the sun are. For example, it depends on one of it is the reflected back into the space absorbed by the earth's atmosphere. That's the, the, the energy that the amount of energy that they have absorbed by the earth. Okay? Absorbed by the earth's uh, atmosphere or by the earth's surface emitted from the earth's surface. So, amount of energy you absorb from the sun and the amount of energy you emitted and what is reflected back to you by the greenhouse gases. These are the three factors that affect what the earth will look like. Now, let's take a look at the greenhouse effect. The rate of absorption and emissions of uh, radiations on earth contributes to the greenhouse effect. Now, this is a natural process that warms the earth's surface from the sun. It's a very natural process that the Earth's surface will be warmed by the heat from the sun. Now, the sun's thermal radiation reaches the Earth's atmosphere where some radiation is reflected back to the space and any radiation not reflected is absorbed or re-radiated by the greenhouse gases. Now, the absorbed radiation that warms the atmosphere and the surface of the Earth. Okay? We said this is similar to what happens in a greenhouse to keep humid and warm the temperature to grow the plants. This is what happened in our greenhouse case. Now here is the, the, the earth. Here is the sun. Here we have the sun. Here we have the earth. Now the sun sends heat energy to the earth to warm the earth. Okay, the part of the earth that is receiving the heat from the sun is the daytime. The other side of the earth will be at night. Okay, okay we, we are not explaining that, but, but that's what we have. Then here we have a sunlight in space. Then the heat energy is supposed to what? Supposed to escape back to the atmosphere. But because of our activity, greenhouse gases trap them and return some of this heat to the air. The air by warming, warming the entire space, atmosphere, and warming the air. And this becomes, makes the air super warm for us. Super, super warm for us. Now let's take a look at the last one. Investigative radiation. Okay, quickly. We do this, I think we end this chapter. We end this chapter. Let's quickly see this one. Investigative radiation. Okay. Okay, investigative infra infrared radiation, IRA is infrared, infrared radiation, or investigative what you call thermal radiation. Okay? Now, the aim of this experiment, we want to carry out an experiment. The aim of this experiment, the aim is uh, the aim of the experiment is to investigate how the amount of infrared radiation absorbed or radiated by the surface depends on the nature, on the nature of that surface. Now, here are some variables, remember, in uh, physics, you are asked to plan one experiment. In physics and chemistry, you are asked to plan one experiment. So you give the aim of the experiment, then you give the variables. The, we, in the variables, we have dependent variable, we have independent variables, and we have the control variables. You must itemize these three variables. So the independent variable in this case is your color. Okay? Is the color. Is the independent variable. The dependent variable is the temperature. Everything is dependent on temperature. 
The control variables include one, the identical flask that you're going to use, then same amount of hot water you're going to use for all of them is a control variable. Control variable, okay, same amount of uh, hot water is one of the control variable. Same static temperature of the water. You, you have same static temperature, it's also a control variable. You must have same static temperature. Same time interval is a control variable. So the factors that you have to, what we mean by control variable, the things, the condition, the fair condition you give to all of them. The fair condition you give to your experiments. Okay, it's your control variable. Your dependent variable is what everything really, really depends on. When we're talking about thermal radiation, we're depending on temperature. And the independent, independent variable is something that, that the experiment needs, but not like as if everything is super dependent on, on, on it. So color, your color variation. Is that okay? Now then you list, the next thing to do is to list your equipment. Your equipment, what you call your, your apparatus. This is what you call your apparatus. You list them. So the equipment and their purpose, what they do. Like you say, kettle to boil the water for thermometer to measure the temperature of the water. Flax painted different colors, black, dark, gray, white, silver, to investigate the heat loss of the different color, using the different colors. Either heat loss or heat gain, using the different color. Then you heat proof mat uh, to protect the surface to prevent heat loss from the bottom of the flask. You use what we call the heat proof mat to prevent heat loss. And then you use a stopwatch to record the time it takes for wa the water to cool, right? To measure the time it takes for water to cool. So you give all of this when you're planning your experiment. Then the next is your resolution. Resolution of measuring equipment. Thermometer equals to one degree sensors. Stopwatch is 0 0.01 seconds. These are your resolutions, like allowable, uh, allowable range. Now your method is to describe with diagrams, describe your, your, this is called your procedure. It's called your procedure, to describe with diagram. You can see the different color, the black, the gray, the white, the silver. So the different color are your beaker, your thermometers. You use a, you use a cork to prevent heat loss from here and you use a, a heat mat, right? Heat proof mat to prevent heat loss at the bottom. Now then you say, you draw the diagram, you say, set up the four identical flasks painted gray, black, gray, white, and silver, okay? And then you just, you draw the diagram, you sketch the diagram, and then in the exam, paper six, in IGCSE paper six, you, well, they, there's a place they ask you to describe an experiment. So if they give you a radiation experiment, this is what you do. Then you say you fill the, the flask with hot water, then ensure the measurements start from the same initial temperature. That's the second point. Third point is note the static temperature and then measure the temperature at regular interval, e.g. in every 30 seconds for 10 minutes, for a period of 10 minutes. Then after that, you show your results. Analysis of your result. All warm objects emit thermal radiation in the form of infrared waves. The intensity of the wavelength or the, intens the intensity and the wavelength of the emitted radiation depends on the following. Depends on the temperature, number one, the temperature of the object or the temperature of the body. Hotter objects emit more thermal radiation. It depends on the surface area of the body. Larger surface area will emit more thermal radiation. It depends on the color of the surface. Okay, like the things you've learned before from this chapter, the three factors on which. So you discuss them in your result analysis. Most of the heat lost from the beakers will be due to conduction and convection. You give these factors. They attribute to heat method of heat loss. And this will be same for each beaker as the color depends, the, uh, does not affect the heat loss in this way. The color does not affect. So the heat loss will be same for all the beakers. Now, any, any difference in heat loss between the beaker must therefore be due to infrared and thermal radiation. Any difference in heat loss between the beakers must be 
due to the infrared or the thermal radiation. Because the heat loss by conversion and conduction is same for all the beakers. Now, if there's any difference in heat loss, it's as a result of thermal radiation because each of the materials have different rates of heat emission and heat absorption. Now, to compare the rate of heat loss of each flask, we plot a graph of temperature in our y-axis against time on the x-axis. And then we show a sketch like this. We show a sketch like this. You can see the, the black. Okay? You can see for the dull gray, you can see for the silver, in white and there's the silver. Use different color to determine this. Now you see color. The black is a good, is good, cools fastest. You can see, black was cooling the fastest. Right? And then gray well resembles circle fastest. The dull gray, circle fastest. The white was the third fastest. Poor best. Sec or you can say circle lowest. We will not use fastest now. Circle lowest. And that silver is very poor and is the uh, cools the slowest. Cools the, the slowest. So when you do this cache and make a table for it, this is how you make your precise report when they ask you to plan an experiment. And then any object, any example, uh, say an example table of uh, the result might look like this. You know, they tell you to make a table, but don't put figures in the table, in your paper seats. So you put your time into the time, the black, the temperature of the black one, temperature of the white one, temperature of the dull one, temperature of the silver one, temperature of the dull gray color, and then the temperature of the silver. You put 0 0.5 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, up to 7 minutes. Uh, in minutes, sorry, 0 0.5 minutes. 1 minute, 1.5, 2, 2 minutes, 2.5, 3 up to 7 minutes, you take their temperature. But in the exam, you don't need to fill this one up because it's just a planned experiment. It's not as if you did, it's called alternative to practical. You didn't actually do the real experiment. So you're just doing alternative to practical. So you have all of this. You just make the table like this. You don't have to put uh, values in it. They will even tell you. Then you uh, evaluated the experiment. You put your errors systematic errors. Then you give the conditions to prevent the errors. Okay? Make sure that the static temperature of the water is same for each of the material. You say this to avoid error. Since this will cool very quickly. Now, it's best to do the experiment in pairs to coordinate static stopwatch and immersing the thermometer. So you do them in pairs so that you can coordinate everything and how you immerse it. Then use data logic connected to the digital thermometer to get more accurate reading in order to avoid error. Okay, you use data logger connected to the digital. That means not data logger is computer, computer connected to the thermometer so that you can get more accurate reading. More, what they're saying, don't read the, don't take the reading by yourself manually. You, you connect to the computer to the experiment, to the thermometer, and then the, the computer will read the values for you. Is that okay? Data loggers. Then random errors. Here are the errors that can come randomly. One is the make sure that the hole of the thermometer is it too big. Otherwise, heat will escape from it. Like this one. Make sure that the hole of the thermometer is it too big. Sometimes we use cork to merge it so that heat energy do not escape from it. And then we say take repeated readings. Take repeated readings for each time of the column. Meaning you don't do it once. You repeat this and find the average value so that you can improve your readings, can improve your results. Take repeated readings for each colored flask. For each colored flask, don't just do once, you jump. You do once, you repeat it again. Do one, like two, three, three, four times, you find the average values of each, each time. And then you'll be more accurate. Then read the values on the thermometer at eye level. Avoid error due to parallax. Avoid parallax error. Avoid parallax error. Okay? That's you must, your eye, line of sight must be on the meniscus. Your line of sight must be on the meniscus so to avoid parallax errors. And then the safety, you measure your safety for experiment. Safety consideration. Keep water away from all the electrical equipment so to avoid shock, electrical shock. Keep water away from all the electrical equipment. Make sure not to touch the hot water directly. Don't touch the hot water. Run any bonds immediately under cold water cold running water for like five minutes period. Do not over, overfill the kettle. 
because when you overfill the culture and you're hitting it, it will start to escape. It will start to escape, right? Okay, do not uh, overfill the kettle. Okay? They carry out experiment on while standing in order to react quickly to any speed. Do not sit while carry out the experiment. Carry out the experiment while standing. Is that okay? Okay, so with this, we've come to the end of our today's uh, uh, class.